Hello again in this episode, which is the second episode that is related to material in chapter two, we're going to focus on the human development index. As we were using our measure last time, national income per capita in purchasing power parity terms is one common way of looking at the development level of a country. But of course, based upon the SENS capabilities to function approach, that's our broad rubric for the course as a whole in many ways, we can see that that's not an adequate way to have a real idea about human capabilities. And so we want to supplement income at the very least with some other indicators. As we are already looking at for the case of capabilities, health and education comes up multiple times as something of great importance. And so other ind indicators can be considered as well. We talked about a couple. One was women's economic empowerment. So that we can sometimes take a dashboard approach. And the analogy here is to the dashboard of your car in which you have a lot of indicators such as are your tires deflated? You know, what's, how much gas do you have? How fast are you going? And things of this kind. So similarly, you can see a broad range of numbers and there's a table in the text that gives an example of that. However, um, in some cases, it's better to have an index than this kind of dashboard. One of the reasons is that attention to how well a country is doing often gets zeroed in on one particular indicator. So if that's going to happen, you want to have something that is as good as you can get and we're pretty sure we can do better than income. So the Human Development Index was the first major attempt to do this. It's been improved over time, and it does have um, some, uh, some significance. And so we have, and are going to focus on the new Human Development Index. You may in your um, previous courses, if you've ever run into the HDI, and often two or three uh, participants in my classes have, you may very well um, have seen the traditional index, um, which actually has not been in current use uh, for about 10 years now. And so the new human development index was introduced in November 2020, uh, 2010 rather, um, and so that it is a way of aggregating an index that we create out of income, so we're not just taking income, but we're thinking about diminishing marginal utility of income, an indicator for health, which is usually life expectancy, and then indicator for education that is currently a combination of realized average education in the population and based on conditions there now, the expectancy of what a child will be able to achieve in their life, kind of like a life expectancy, it's an education expectancy. And then you can look at variations so that you don't have to just look at the HDI for the country as a whole. You can look at the HDI, for example, of the majority ethnic groups and minor, minority ethnic groups and so on within a country. And I'll have a couple examples um, of that. And so there's a couple of important differences um, from the old um, Human Development Index, which took the arithmetic mean. The new one, the current one, takes the geometric mean. And so I think it's worth spending a little bit of time on that because it's less clear to many people. So what happened with the traditional HDI that possibly you saw before, and it's often used just because it's a relatively simpler. Well, you first come up with an income index, something that ranges between zero and one, which is a normal characteristic we expect and want in all indexes, um, or most of them. You know, a life expectancy index, so that's between zero and one, once again, when you get done with the index, and then an education index. And so you add these three up and you divide by three and you get the human development index of the traditional nature. Or equivalently, you multiply each of these indices by one third and then add, then add them back up. That's the tradition. Whereas with the new HDI, we have a geometric mean. And so that is used um, at a couple of different stages. It's used to build up the education index that's then used in the overall HDI. And so that you then take the cube root of the products of the 
uh, of the um, individual indices, of the indices uh, multiplied uh, together, as we're going to see um, in just a moment. So the idea here is that the reformulation is going to allow for um, imperfect substitutability. Just in a nutshell, what does this um, really get at? Well, we have three dimensions here, and so I can't do more than um, two dimensions without stretching your imagination. Uh, already we're on the on, on video, but let's just take and consider two of the dimensions, which are health and education. With the arithmetic mean, it's saying that we can have the same level of the human development index, whatever this number is, maybe it's 0.75. We can have the same value, whether the value is based entirely on a comparatively higher level of health or zero education in this example, or comparatively high level of education and zero um, health, or with 50-50. So it suggests that you're willing to make these trade-offs one for one. But that's very unlikely because um, people are going to have diminishing um, um, uh, utility, diminishing productivity, as you have uh, no education to go with the health that you have, for example. So instead, the idea is that there's some trade-off, that as you lose education, metaphorically, but you lose it, if you're looking at a country with less education, in order to have um, a human development index that's just as high, you need somewhat proportionately higher um, health. So that's basically part of the idea here. And so that development specialists and development economists in particular think that this is a more plausible way to think about trade-offs. Right, so then the human development index, what does this mean? The human development index then takes those indices for life, education, and income. Each of these things range from zero to one and then raises each of them to the power one-third and then multiplies them together. Or, what's exactly the same thing, multiplies the three index numbers together and then takes the cube root. And the result is, again, an index that goes between zero and one. And so this allows for imperfect substitutability. I like the way of expressing it as saying that it shows how well-rounded, it takes account, let's say, that's better, of how well-rounded an economy, a society is with respect to its achievements in these various dimensions of health, education, and income in this one. And there are some other um, differences as well. I think what is useful to do is to explain what's going on um, by means of an example, and that'll give us an opportunity to delve into the Human Development Index in a little more detail. So here we have an example in the text. It is the case of Ghana. The data is a few years old, but it hasn't changed drastically, and the idea is to be um, indicative of how this goes. So we have three components to build up the Human Development Index. One is gross national income per capita and purchasing power parity terms. Another representing health is life expectancy at birth. And then to represent the amount of education, there's two parts. One is the average level of education in the country as a whole, and the other is this expected level of schooling. As a child is born, what's the schooling expectancy? And so for this case of Ghana, life expectancy at birth in this year, which was, I think, seven years ago or so, something like that, six or six years ago, the life expectancy was 64.6 years. Um, the GNI per capita was 1,684, again, in purchasing power parity adjusted terms. The average person in Ghana living at that time had, an, had seven years of schooling, and it was estimated that a child born at that point, like a life expectancy, could be expected in their lifetime to attain 11.4 years of schooling. So this is the underlying data for this basic way of calculating a human development index. And so for each of these cases, we want to look at goalposts. A lower goalpost, which is the worst you can do, we don't want to be close to that, and then we have an upper goalpost, which is the achievement that the country is imagined or understood to be striving for. 
that can, in most cases, be above where the country currently um, finds itself. So here we have the case of the life expectancy index. And so the thought is that no country in the last century really has had a life expectancy of less than 20. So that's the lowest that you could uh, be thought of as doing. Um, in contrast, the highest that you can, thought, uh, can, can think about doing is reaching 83.6 years in this year. And the way that they arrived at that for this index is that the country with the highest life expectancy in the world in that year, which I think was Japan, had a life expectancy at birth of 83.6 years. And so that gives you the upper goal post of 83.6 years. The lower goal post is 20. And then we look at the case of Ghana. We see that it has, as we saw, 64.6 years of life. We subtract off the 20 years, and we see that they're 46.6 uh, years above that lower goal post. 